fishing quotas are a matter of much debate, but there is no arguing that marine resources must be managed wisely. Research vessels like this one collect data to ensure the health of our seas and the future of fisheries. For six weeks every year, the research vessel Celtic Explorer surveys Ireland's Atlantic Shelf, sampling 170 points on the nautical chart. Led by David Stokes, the Marine Institute scientific team tackle the questions only fishery surveys can answer. How many young fish have been spawned over the past year? Is this new generation of fish numerous enough to replace what has been removed by fishing vessels? In other words, is commercial fishing here sustainable? We're out at this time of the year basically fishing to try and assess the size of uh, various fish stocks and um, all the mersel species so they, they're the species that uh, live and feed on on the seabed basically so we, we try and estimate whether the uh, stocks are going up or down uh, and in particularly try and focus on the juvenile fish that are coming through into the fishery at each sampling station the vessel deploys a trawl that has been specially modified to catch small fish this is different from commercial fishing vessels that use nets with large meshes aimed at targeting only mature fish. For the scientists, this work is crucial for forecasting what can be caught in the future. Their motto is good science, supporting sustainable fisheries. We shoot the trawl, it goes to the seabed and then we tow it along the seabed for 30 minutes, haul it back um, and then it's dropped into the hopper. and then the fish come into the, um, into the fish room where everything is sorted into species. This onboard laboratory works like a busy factory floor in the middle of the sea. The researchers quickly sort fish from the moving conveyor belt into separate boxes. They are especially interested in the commercial stocks like haddock, whiting and other economically important species. The size of each fish is then taken with an electronic measuring board. All the data are combined in a database to make it easier to spot any errors. For the commercial stocks, we take length, sex, maturity, and the offlet from the ears, which gives us the age of the fish. In a sense, it's kind of like reading the age of a tree by the rings. By studying ear bones, scientists can accurately determine the proportion of young fish in the population. Shrimp, crab and invertebrates also help monitor the general health of the marine ecosystem. You see here in the tray we've got a really good uh, selection of benthic creatures that we caught in the last show. It tells us how diverse the, the, the community of animals are at that particular station, at that particular time. So we know that in this area we're seeing a, a certain number of species every year and we're, we're all, always interested in species richness and diversity. Everything that is caught is logged, even plastic litter. Fishery surveys collect a wide range of data used by marine scientists, such as the water temperature, the salinity at various depths, or the hydroacoustic profile of the seafloor. As part of the EU data collection framework, this is one of many coordinated surveys along the northern and western coasts of the European continent. These surveys are run around the same time every year, normally around October to November. Um, and include probably about 10 countries all using the same standard protocols, procedures and, and very similar sampling gear, even though it wouldn't be exactly the same. But it is quite a, a piece of work to try and keep independent countries with different languages, different uh, capacities and different resources to keep everybody on, on the same fixed page, you know, all the time. So yeah, there's, there's quite a lot of coordination work has to go into actually keeping all that as standard as it is. The results of the surveys conducted by all these research vessels are collected and analysed at an intergovernmental organisation headquartered in the Danish capital. Here in Copenhagen, the International Council for the Exploration of the Sea examines scientific and commercial data to forecast future changes in marine ecosystems, preparing what's known as the scientific advice for decision makers charged with managing fisheries.
all the countries submit their data on surveys and also on catch here to ICs. And then that flows into what we call working groups, which are internationally uh, scientific groups, which uh, put it all together and start putting the information into our models. Based on the advice of such scientific bodies, the EU and neighbouring countries can restrict fishing to help populations recover or expand the quotas for thriving species. Given the competing interests, reaching agreement isn't easy. There are some major challenges. One is trying to make sure that we work in partnership with the fishing industry and also with the environmental groups to make sure that the overall impression and understanding of the processes are good enough to have a consensus in terms of our advice. While environmental activists see many catch limits as excessive and unsustainable, fishermen say the tight quotas are putting their businesses at risk. At the port of Chuburon in northwestern Denmark, fishermen are skeptical about the scientific advice. They say catches are better than forecast, but the available resources can't be fully harnessed due to what they see as a rush to sustainability. Stocks go up and down. We, as fishermen, we have to live with that. But what's really important is that the advice is what we see at sea. And at the moment, sometimes there's a big difference. You have climate changes, you have caught stocks who moved north. Maybe it's time to, to modernize the way they do the service. The fishermen say they're happy to share their own data with the scientists and new technologies make that easier. The Chuburon Fishing Auction sells around 150 tonnes of fish a day, all online. That's valuable data readily available to the researchers. In addition to that, fishermen often invite scientists onto their vessels to make observations that can help fine-tune mathematical models. We have a good cooperation, in Denmark at least, between scientific institutions and the fishing industry. There may be some harsh words sometimes, uh, and disagreements certainly quite often, but there's a good cooperation, it's a, a common goal of getting the stock size right because that's in everybody's interest. Everybody appreciate that. The fishing industry relies on healthy fishing stocks for its very survival. However imperfect, surveys still remain the best way to monitor them.